converting leads, getting people to buy more frequent, frequently, having them buy more often uh, and pay a little bit more, and then, of course, managing margins. So I, I do that on a daily basis for the people that I consult with. That's what I do in the daytime. Uh, in the nighttime, I am actually a poet. I, am. Um, I write poetry. Okay. Uh, I do my best to write one piece of poetry per day. And um, I, uh, I actually uh, quite a, in my earlier days when we were, I don't know if you want me to continue talking. Oh, honestly, this is, I told <laughs> I you, I Odin, no, don't. <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> sipping my tea and listening. This Are is you great. still there, Sarah? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Uh, do we get, oh, okay, yes. perfect. So, uh, yeah, I just I wasn't sure if you had, had heard that there. I did, uh, I heard but, it all. It's, it, yeah, very interesting. Very, very good. Yeah, so in my early days, I think what what uh, really got us uh, um, is that I did something unusual in my early days. I I, um, I I come from Winnipeg originally, and I actually I got accepted to the University of Winnipeg for studying psychology, and um, I, I decided that instead of studying psychology in Winnipeg, I was going to move to British Columbia, and so I did. I moved to BC, and uh, I ended up uh, having my astrology chart done. And I was uh, smitten with the psychological uh, aspects of it. And um, somebody, I, I actually, the first time I ever had uh, astrology done on me, I, I had someone read an ephemeris. And an ephemeris is um, a book of uh, where of all the planets and all the symbols and where they are at any specific day um, throughout the entire year. And as a, as a matter of fact, the planets are, are in our solar system are in a specific place today in relation to your birth and so i was like whoa this is amazing i want to learn this and so from the years 1996 until 2000 i studied astrology at the holistic academy of metaphysical science and arts out, out in white rock as a matter of fact just a private school uh, there was no places to actually learn astrology at the time uh, after i graduated kepler college in in the in uh, uh, washington uh, ended up opening up and uh, i actually i actually um i did that for a number of years and i ran a, a pretty successful life coaching business doing astrology and uh, no one else was doing it and uh, as a matter of fact uh, uh, I, I uh, ended up leaving my old job, my old position. I was working at uh, Grand and Toy at the time and um, uh, ended up uh, being able to take advantage of a government grant that allowed me to write a business plan to become a professional astrologer and life coach. And I remember them sitting me down there and going for the interview uh, of whether they were going to they – they paid us for all the education. I think it was 10 weeks of education, ongoing support. And I still have support to this very day, by the way, and that was back in 2001 that I ended up going to Douglas College uh, for that uh, for that program, the business uh, training program. And uh, I ended up uh, building that business out uh, and doubling that business every year until I um, – until I, uh, and this is just a little bit of uh, who I am. Um, I realized that astrology wasn't an actual science. And so I did not throw the, the baby out of the bathwater. I actually kept the baby because I think babies are kind of cute. Yes. <laughs> and uh, I ended up uh, researching with a gentleman, a mentor of mine named Jeff Simpson, who uh, founded uh, the newest science uh, of astrology called astrobiology. It took me a couple of years to really transition um, away from understanding the geocentric, which is the Earth-centered um, uh, look of our solar system, to understanding that we are a heliocentered solar system where the sun is at the center of our solar system. It took me about three years to transition from that way of thinking to a new way of thinking. And it, it really uh, helped me to understand the amount of time it takes for any person to transition from one career or one industry to another, and for them to really understand uh, what their business is about. And so uh, in the daytime, I'm a marketing consultant and a coach. And in the evening time, I, uh, I love to research how we are interconnected with our, with our solar system. And um, I would say that uh, I'm a pretty spiritual individual. And I, I look to make sure that, that everything that I go through is in some way able to be passed on uh, for the next generation. So they definitely avoid the mistakes that I've made. How does that help you in your consulting during the day? How would you think that's an advantage? What, what I can you're... keep talking. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> can you hear me okay with these headphones? Can you hear me now? I can hear you now, yeah. All oh, right, because I had my headphones on and it seemed that when I asked you a question, you couldn't hear me. I wonder what's happening with those headphones. Okay, I'll pick them out. Um, what the, what, from what you're doing at night, how does that help you during your day job? Tell me how that's gone into the day for you. <laughs> 
quite frankly, it's, uh, it's, it's really been everything in my life. Um, you know, I, I have a, you know, I have my daytime Facebook page and my daytime working page. And then I have my other Facebook page, my other social media pages where nobody knows who I am. I don't show my picture. I don't show absolutely anything. And uh, I've tried to mix the two, but they just don't mix very well. Um, I, I find that uh, you know I, I've been I've, I've been on social media using my uh, using social media as a platform for um, my spiritual growth now since uh, 2012. Actually, 12, 12, 12. To oh, be excellent! Precise. Good. Yeah, I, I mean, I had social media and stuff before that, but that was the, it was in 2012 that I really decided that I would go all in and start paying attention. And um, it, it's actually, I find that uh, it's really good to have a network of individuals that have no idea what you do and just like you for who you are. They can't make, the, and the only judgment that people have towards me is whether if they like my poetry or if they like the posts that I make. Okay, <laughs> so yeah, that's good. It's not a good it, place to be. Yeah. It really is a great place. I, yeah. I, I find that, um, you know, I get a lot of traction with my regular uh, business on a daily basis, but I find I get way more traction on uh, on my posts and I don't sell anything on that on that page all it is is just me expressing um the lessons that I've gone through and and the pains and the difficulties and uh, the stuff that I had to overcome uh to uh, to to essentially have an emotional intelligence that allows me to see that I have a blessed life in, in every way, shape, and form. My, I'm healthy. My family's healthy. I have a roof over my head. I mean, you know, um, and, and quite frankly, you know, a lot of the things that I do in the evening time, let's say uh, stargazing, let's call it that, stargazing. Okay. Um, you know, it, it really pushed me to set my goals in such a way that uh, I, I understood that there was a way that we can manifest and create, but I didn't know the exact mechanism. In my early days, I, I remember creating in reverse where I would say I wouldn't want something and all of a sudden it would happen. <laughs> okay, yeah, be careful what you wish for is what they say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I would wow. not want something I really wanted and then I would trick myself into not wanting it so I'd get it. It's, it's yes, kind of a good. <laughs> it just goes to show how the brain works when Isn't you don't, when you're not given the step by step process of, of creating or manifesting or, or, and when you're not given the step-by-step -step process of how to create an, a really good ad that gets a uh, that gets attention or attraction. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you know, uh, on over the last uh, number of, of, uh, months and years, you know, just last year we had over 200 people come to our, to our events. I mean, is that a lot of people? Well, that's exactly the amount of people that I was able to handle. And, um, that has given us a, a really nice foundation, uh, to work from the the company that I work with, of course. Yeah. And uh, I, I I would say that it, it it's um you know uh, the the evening stuff is really it's given me perspective because I realize that I'm I'm only here for a short period of time and I'm I'm as great as I am at marketing and doing business and so on. I, I think that you know the early days when I sought out uh, enlightenment and when I wanted consciousness. Um, uh, to be aware, to, to have the tools, the wherewithal, the wisdom to make better decisions. I think, I think that's what the evening has given me. And I, uh, right. my library, and you know, we're not on video, but uh, I have a, a library, a physical library of oh, probably, probably about 3,000 books. Um, and uh, I've got a digital library of probably about 10,000. So over the last 20 years, I've just been an avid collector of anything, anything to do with um, uh, self-development, and, uh, and making, and I, I essentially, I want to be a resource for individuals so they can go to and say, Oh, and I need this. Oh, and I need that. Oh, and I need this. And I'm like, okay, I got that. I got this. I got this. Yeah, that'd be great. That's yeah. kind of what I want it to be. Yeah. Hope that, uh, hope, hope the answer was the good. You there. know, I love the answer because it's very interesting. When I spoke to you last week, I honestly was very, very interested in all aspects of what you've got to share with the listeners, because I think it helps everyone in seeing there's different things that can help you in different areas of your life. And it doesn't always necessarily have to be connected. It doesn't have to be. Now, one thing that I want you to go with, when you say that people can see, you know, how they can get through things, can you go back a few years ago into when you started out and how you got going in different areas of your life to where you are today? Yeah, I think what I'll do is uh, I, I'm, I'm going to dive right into, um, in, yeah, I, I, yeah, I'm going to dive right into money. Good. And, dive and, in. um, and how, you know, I really wanted to, you know, how, how 
in the early days when when I went to the holistic academy or just let's just call it the academy, I learned uh, comparative religion, I learned philosophy, I, I learned um, uh, astrology because that was part of the philosophical understanding of a human being. Um, you know, I learned all these things, but one thing that it didn't teach me was it didn't really teach me uh, about money. It taught me all the holistic aspects that go along with being holistic, <laughs> yeah. uh, but it didn't really teach me uh, the money aspect or leverage. And so uh, what I what I decided to do is that I was going to put myself, I was in a transition uh, phase uh, in, in my business, and I decided I was going to learn about money. And so I went and I took a uh, course at the Chief Dan George Center for Advanced Education. It was called Advanced Customer Training, and it was specifically put on by one of the big five banks, RBC. Okay. I can say it. I work for them. Yes. And um, and uh, anyone who went through this program actually got hired on from RBC. And so I took this uh, part-time training. It was only going to be a casual thing to supplement my income and to understand banking and how it works. I thought it was prestigious, by the way. It's certainly in North America, banking is not prestigious at all. Uh, it's a, a minimum wage job, and they give you 10 cents an hour raise maybe once or twice a year. <laughs> so well, yes. it, they definitely have a monopoly, a uh, billion-dollar monopoly each in every single quarter, that is for certain. But I did learn a lot about money, and I would I would say that these hands have been polarized uh, to money. To millions of dollars have gone through these hands, and that's what I take away from that is that is is that is that feeling. And there were two major lessons that I learned at the bank. Uh, number one uh, was uh, um, don't do what the bank tells you to do; do what the bank does. And now that one really stumped me for quite some time, and I didn't really understand what the bank did, uh, but I understood what they told me to do. And so I, as I started to pay more and more attention about what the bank does, I started to become more and more aware of what it is that they're doing and how I and how us citizens can do pretty much exactly what the bank is doing, but they don't want you to know that because they would, pre they would prefer you go to the bank and use their services course, yes. instead of private funding. So, the, so uh, that was the first thing. And the second thing that I was recommended when I saw my first million-dollar bank account, uh, there was just a million dollars sitting there, and I said to this guy, I said, okay, um, how did you get a million dollars? Like, how, what would you give me some wisdom for that? And the guy told me, get into real estate. And so uh, that were two little seeds that were planted in my head, and it was really in in that in those years in 2005, I think it was okay. uh, 2006, 2007, uh, 2008, around that time, and, until I bought my marketing franchise in 2007, where I got some pretty decent education in regards to how money works and and what to do with it. And actually, I started using the bank and understanding. I went to those bankers. By the way, any banker. Go and talk to them. Uh, they want to talk to you. They want to help you. They want to educate you. They want to show you what it is they do. They want to see how much they, – they want to help you get a mortgage. They want to do all these things in order to get you your foot in the door if you don't own real estate or, um, or any of the other products and services they have. But I'd be very wary, or, uh, wary of, um, of uh, using um, – I, for instance, I, I have people that come to me and say, Odin, what do you feel about – how do you feel about new cars? And I bought a new car in the past, and I just at this point, I just decide that I am probably never going to buy a new car again. I just don't like monthly payments that that uh, that go against my total debt service ratio, which stop me from actually going and buying more assets that that give me a passive income instead of a liability that forces me to pay something out. So uh, years ago, I went and bought my dream car. I got a um, an old E30 BMW, just absolutely beautiful drive. Okay, and, good. And um, yeah, it's just absolutely beautiful. It took me a few years to find it. I really did a lot of research into it, and it was just uh, it was really cool. But but getting back to that, uh, that's when that's when um, uh, that's when real estate was seeded into my mind. I remember my first real estate course that I went to was Russ Whitney. That was way before Rich Dad Poor Dad and Robert mm -hmm. Kiyosaki and uh, and uh, Donald Trump and all those other guys, mm -hmm. uh, Don Campbell and all those guys. It was way before that. And I wanted to take their five thousand dollar course because they were going to teach no money down real estate. And I was like, no money down real estate. I want to take this. And I remember I was with uh, I was with a friend of mine named Aura 
at the time. And uh, so I came home to my wife and uh, I said, hey, wife, I got this great, uh, um, my wife's name's Rhea. Uh, I, got, I said, Rhea, I got this great course I want to take and so on and so forth. And, uh, and we decided that that wasn't the right time. And, uh, and so we pushed that off. And it was kind of a good thing because back in 2007, after I left the bank, I started to implement those, the ideas. I, I, um, I did pretty good in my first year of having.